So what I want to share with you tonight is how to create a watercolor wash background. And I'll just show you one example really quickly. So this is a little album I did in my classes about a year ago. And you see this blue that's kind of going around, well, it is going around this man. That's what we call a watercolor wash background. So it's where you're getting a really soft background that uh, focuses around your image rather than the parts where you're actually coloring in the image. Okay, so first of all, this really only works on two papers. You have your actual watercolor paper, or you have the shimmer white paper. It does not work well on the whisper white or the very vanilla. Now those papers you could probably get away with using a little bit of water, like with your water-based markers or with your um, pencils or maybe just a little bit of painting inside of an image. But when you're putting a lot of water all over the whole thing, uh, those papers aren't really designed to accept a lot of water, whereas the watercolor paper has a lot of cotton in it. And the shimmer white has like a waxy sheen on it, so the water kind of sits on top. It doesn't absorb as much or as quickly as it would on the whisper white that doesn't have quite the same level of coating on it. Coating, that's the word I'm looking for. So there's two ways to do watercolor washes. Whether you're using the watercolor paper or the shimmer white, doesn't matter. It's the same technique for either one. You can just actually make a little solution using just a little bit of water in a dish and some drops of ink. That way the ink is already smooth, it's diluted, you're not gonna get dark and light spots or big streaks because it's already very diluted. It's gonna add a few more drops in there. Um, the other fun thing about doing it this way is you can even mix inks and create some different colors. Now before we do that, I'm just gonna show you the new water painters. So our blue aqua painters have discontinued and we have these new ones. The interesting thing is that it's the same price, but you get three brushes this time and you're getting a very, very thin tip, a medium tip, and then this big flat tip, which this is the one that's really great for doing these kind of larger backgrounds. Now it fills with water in the barrel just like the previous ones did, however, they screw on and off the opposite direction as the other ones. So if you're struggling to get the um, brush tip on or off, um, just try it the other way. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is, because this has already a lot of water in it, obviously, uh, I'm not gonna do anything to the paper first and we can just brush it on. And also, I'm inadvertently doing so, but you can get the little splatter effects because it's got so much water in it, okay? And it goes on really nicely and easily with um, this big flat brush. Now you can let it dry and add on more layers to make it darker and also have some light and darks. You can add on quite a lot here and then you can just move the ink so you get some kind of streaks running through it. I'll show you some examples of that later. Okay, but that's just one way to do it. But just diluting the ink first seems to eliminate a lot of the issues of big streaks and things. So here's one that I did uh, about an hour ago, same color. And you can see another fun thing about doing these washes is some of the inks, I don't know if you, hopefully you can see that, some of the inks actually start to separate and you get, like I can see a little bit of pink in here and a little bit of blue. Um, and it's just kind of fun. I actually really enjoy playing with the inks. It even looks green right now. So if I wanted to with this dry one, I could even go back and add another layer that will then show another little edge when it dries. So it's just kind of fun to play with. Or I could even do layers in some different colors. Okay, let's brush that. I'll get the brown off of that one, hopefully. Then the other way that you can do uh, watercolor wash backgrounds is, now this time I'm using watercolor paper, but again, it will work on either one. I'm just looking for the ink pad. There we go. And I'm gonna use balmy blue. Is if you have, say, a stamped image already and um, you just wanna put some color around the image, but not 
over the image. I'm just getting it wet first. Now I'm using the smaller brush just so I have a little more control. I won't do the whole thing, but just, just do some of it so you get the idea. So basically what I'm doing is getting the paper wet first. Okay, then I'm gonna pull some ink off my ink pad. Now there's no reason why you can't just put a few drops of water on here as well, just to make this not quite so intense e as well. You know, just, but because I've already put water on there, the ink doesn't immediately soak into the paper and create, you know, like a, a streak or a splotch. It just keeps moving because it's already wet. Okay. It's quite fun. Now, the fun thing too is you can, you could let this dry and then go back and do a little bit darker layer right near the girl so that areas out here further away would be a bit lighter. Okay, so you can just either let it sit or you could use a little heat tool to speed the process along. Okay, and you might want to just put a few, a little bit of light color down in through the flowers. Then you can go back over the flowers with a darker color to cover that up. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So you see how the color has moved really well in through there. Then another thing you can do is on this little piece of paper, I have, you probably can't see it yet, but um, I have white embossed an image. So another way you can use this watercolor wash background is by, just wanna make sure I've got enough water, over the top of embossed images and just wash over it to create. Now I don't want to go too dark because I'm probably going to want to go back over and color the dress maybe in a different color. So what I could do is take a smaller tip, get the blue out of there, and go back around the actual girl and go a little bit darker if I wanted to. Okay, but that's just another way you can do this technique over the top of embossing to get that emboss resist look as well. Okay, now there's all sorts of fun and crazy things you can do once you have the color laid down. You know, you can flick more water on it, you can stamp on it with water or with color. Um, yeah, use paste on it, there's just a million things. But that's just the basic idea of how to get a smooth smooth watercolor background like so and like so okay uh, i just want to show you some samples um let's go back to our the one with the um a good man so you see i've i colored him first let him dry and then just added that blue around him after i got the paper wet just like i um, demonstrated for you just now this sample there was ink put on and it was quite wet, like a lot of water on it, and then the paper was just tipped until the ink started running and then let dry like that. And it and, uh, looks like there was a little bit of yellow put in there as well. So that can look quite good as, um, too. Now this one, um, there was a wash of the seaside spray, let dry, and then a second layer put, put on, which is where you can see that little edge there, which I think that looks awesome i like i like that look as well but i just wanted to show you what it looks like finished because we did we talked about it briefly and then on this one just did a, a simple wash of crumb cake let dry stamped over it and put some flowers on it so just a really simple easy background that doesn't require any extra layers or cutting okay let me get those out of the way then these three, using the Beautiful Moment stamp set, one of my favorites, of course, same techniques where the images were colored and then let dry completely and then just gone back and added the blue watercolor wash background. And you can see where there's been some separation and some different layers of the colors to add some interest, which I think looks really good. I really like that. I like the watercolored look quite a lot. And we use it, I do it quite a bit in my classes and projects. Now this one is discontinued, but one of my absolute favorites, we did this on a Facebook Live earlier, or a few weeks ago. Well, I don't know, I lose track of time. So the bees unfortunately are discontinued, but this was one where I wanted to do just a little 
wash to anchor the bee, you know, visually anchor the bee down. Um, and I had rich razzleberry. I picked up rich razzleberry, but there was still yellow on my brush, uh, which I didn't do it on purpose, but it was quite a happy accident because I absolutely love how this turned out. So this is, I thought was a good example to share, even though the bees have been discontinued, of how you can mix the colors and come up with some really just amazing and awesome creation. So I'll probably never give this card away. I really like it. All right, this is just an example more of the same using the beautiful moments where we've got the different, the water, the sky, the mountains, and the grass, all just different layers of that, getting the paper wet, putting on the ink. I should just point out though, while I have this in my hand, even though all of this area was watercolored, you only want to get, if you, if I, sorry, let me back up. If I'm watercoloring the mountain, you just want to get that mountain butt bit wet and then color that, let it dry, and then do the next thing. Because if I got the whole thing wet, put on the mountain color, that color would start to bleed. Wherever the water was, it would just bleed into the water. Hopefully that makes sense, but it just has to be done layer by layer and stage by stage with watercoloring if you don't want the colors to all blend together, which could be a look too, but it just depends what you want. This is just a really simple card where it was just a little swish of the green just to add that nice background for some simple die cut elements. And then this one's one of everybody's favorites. This is the one that I just demonstrated where we've got the girl from Beautiful Moments, um, heat embossed in white and then just a wash of the gray granite over the top and then once it's dry you can go back and start adding more color over the top um, and as long as that wash is relatively light you can go ahead and add more color over it and it doesn't seem to affect it too much or it might but that's you know like I said it's mixing colors and that's a nice look too or you don't even have to go back and color. You can just have a nice emboss resist sort of look. But thanks for joining me tonight and happy stamping. Bye-bye.